What if you were buying something that you knew was going to appreciate, but maybe you were afraid that it might appreciate too much, like so much that you wouldn't even be able to sell it? Man, what a bad situation to be in. So I put out a video addressing the question, if gold went to $5,000, who would buy it? Now this is not my question, just to be clear, because it seems like a dumb one on the surface, but it comes up a lot. The quick answer here is that the question just does not make any sense because the price can't get to $5,000. If people aren't buying it at $5,000, it's just simple supply and demand. But the part of the question that is fair is whether or not there will be retail buyers balancing out the market, keeping it comparable to what we're seeing today at $2,000. I'm still gonna point out that when the question gets typed out in a comment here, it's typically coming from a doubter, a person trying to imply that if gold shoots up in price, you'll be stuck with it. The value will just be intangible. And whatever, haters gonna hate, but that version of the question, it's not intelligent, and it's really not even worth responding to. The version of the question, though, that might apply here is, what if the price of gold goes to $5,000 because the US dollar is in trouble? Gold is dollar denominated. Now that could actually play out a few different ways. One would be that hyperinflation makes the dollar just spiral down in value, and the demand for gold stays the same, so the price shoots up inversely. That could happen. There will still be buyers in other currencies. There would be buyers in USD too, but the situation here could be one where the general public just might not have capital to be buying. It's possible. In a case like that, local shops might not be buying your gold because they wouldn't have buyers themselves. And private buyers, they might be harder to find too. So that version of the question, it's legitimate. It's just not a likely case because the situation doesn't have to be bad. It has to be extremely bad. And then another situation that I guess would be possible would be that the only remaining buyers would be central banks. Now this one doesn't make a lot of sense to me, honestly, because when Bitcoin was trading at $65,000, buyers were in a frenzy. Bitcoin under $20,000, nobody really cares. So gold or any other asset is going to be pretty much the same. The only reason that this version of the question is relevant is that some people see this as a reason why you should have fractional gold, just greater divisibility. And it's fair, $5,000 might be too much for buyers, $500 might not be. I'm skeptical. It does make sense, but I still think that a spike from $2,000 to $5,000 really wouldn't be enough to cut out those one ounce buyers. I think it'd be more like Bitcoin, where a spike actually brings in more buyers. They might be different, but there'd be more. Now, fractional, it's great. It gives you more flexibility, but I don't think that the premiums are worth paying to get around a situation of higher gold prices and fewer buyers. I wouldn't pay the premiums to only stack one tenth ounce or quarter ounce if it meant that I was buying four or 10 times more coins. It just hurts to even think about all that premium right now. Those are fair things to think about though. So we've taken what looks like a dumb question and I guess we've made it relevant. Now I don't see any case where a future potential spike in price should make you reconsider buying altogether. Probably not even reconsider buying those one ounce coins. You just think of all the people out there with kilo bars of gold. Now they're finding buyers today without much trouble, probably different buyers, but still happening. And a kilo is 32 times more expensive than a one ounce coin. Now the thing that I will reiterate here is that there are going to be cases where having the form of gold that everyone wants just makes a little bit of sense. I've had cases where dealers did not want old European coins. And I realize that that's an extreme case now. Today, they'd probably take them, just maybe not a bunch at one time, but I could always sell them to an online dealer too. It's something to consider though. The future might be a little bit different buying situation now. I mentioned that I spoke to JM Bullion and two local dealers. I asked them all, well, I asked two of them if there was any upper limit to what they would buy if we were talking about eagles and buffaloes. I asked one of them just about like 20. And they both more or less laughed at me. I would never have so many eagles, so many buffaloes that they would choke on them. They would take whatever I wanted to sell. So that's a case that I do think about. If there was ever a quick spike in gold price and lots of people wanted to sell all at the same time for whatever reason, then 
having the most popular type, well, it puts you at the front of the line. And this is a case where maybe, possibly, having certain types of fractional would get you there too. It's not something I'm particularly worried about, but I do have some fractional if that was ever a case. Now this is where the premiums come in. I pay two to 3% more for an Eagle or a Buffalo than I do for say a Britannia. I pay 2% more for a Maple Leaf, but I will get 2% back more in a sale than a Britannia. I'll get at least one to 2% more than on a Maple. So the buy to sell spread is about the same. What that means is if I buy it for 7% over and I sell it for 2% over, that's a 5% spread. Now in the case of an Eagle or Buffalo, maybe I'll lose 1% if I compare that to a Britannia or to a Maple Leaf, but that puts me in that case where I'm exempt from 1099B forms and I'm at the top of my local dealers lists. And I don't know why I use Britannias and Maple Leafs. Both of those are great coins. My dealers would take both of them, especially the Maple Leafs, but I know that because I've asked them. My dealers like Eagles and Buffaloes, Maples and Krugs, and then they're okay with Britannias, Philharmonics, Kangaroos. They will not take any number of Britannias, though. They will choke on them if I bring in, I don't even know how many. I used 10, and my dealer locally said, no, he wouldn't take all 10 at one time. He'd have to sell them in parts. Now, that is very specific information. It's very specific to this one local shop. It's definitely not the case throughout the country. It's absolutely not the case in another country. Try to buy an eagle in Canada. It's not a good idea at least not at scale. So this is why it makes sense to reach out to your local dealers and see what they prefer. So as to a crazy spike in gold price, well, bring it on. I don't buy in hopes that I'll be able to sell for a huge profit, but I do think that by the time that I go to sell, the price of gold is going to be significantly higher than where it is today. And if that price scares off certain buyers at the time, well, I think that that's going to be a good problem to have. And if it's the first case of USD hyperinflation, well, we'll either have bigger problems to deal with or gold will be what allows you to start over. So I guess that kind of brings us full circle back to this question being a little bit of a dumb one. I'm never going to not buy gold because I'm afraid that some point in the future, it's just going to be too valuable. I'm just going to pay a little bit more attention to what I buy in the first place. So that's it. Let us know what you think. Are you worried about being able to sell at some point in the future? Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.